Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and we are now in a new version of the PTU for 3.11, which is now going to bring us the most anticipated ship, at least of this month, which is the Mercury Star Runner. Now, I'm going to be showing you this in Arena Commander to start off, and before we actually get in and see it in person, I did want to take you through the breakdown of the components that are on the ship right now. Um, what you have is a total of four size 2 missiles. Right now, those are going to be your Tempest missiles. You also have two size 3 missiles. Um, that are in uh, different slots around the ship too. So six total missiles, um, although you will actually see that during, based on some of the weaponry you can switch out how many based on the type of missile racks you actually bring along. As far as the components that you have, you've got your cool core, which is a C-class industrial. You, um, you've got two of those. These are uh, medium size um, for your uh, power plants. You have diligence, which are also C-class industrial. You have two of those. And then for your shield generators, you have um, you know two C-class industrials. So it's very consistent across the board. Um, you know these can obviously be upgraded pretty significantly for all of these. The shield generator probably being the one that you would want to update most. Um, you know potentially going over to something like um, you know stealth for if you're wanting to sit in the distance. If you're really focused more on cargo hauling, you're probably better off with a little bit stronger shield. So you kind of customize based on what your experience is. As far as your weapons are concerned, it looks like you have two pilot-controlled weapons, being your Panthers. Um, I believe those are going to be right here under the chin. Um, those look like they're on a little turret themselves, so I'm guessing those are actually going to be um, relatively gimbaled, um, but probably not actually able to size up to a size 4. Um, you have your two turret weapons on top, which are going to be Panthers, and your two man turret weapons on the bottom, which are all the Panthers. And here's the three missile racks where you can customize what you put on it. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit a launch, we'll join into the game, and then we'll see this thing in first person. Alright, and here is the Mercury Star Runner in Arena Commander on Dying Star, and she is a pretty ship, very asymmetrical as expected. Um, what we have here is the big radar dish on the starboard side, that one's supposed to be able to be picking up um, signals for your data running and transmission at some point. On top you'll see that you have a manned turret that's got two panthers on it. Same thing on the bottom. Um, and you'll notice in a little bit why these are in very similar locations on the ship, mostly because of interior design. Uh, towards the front of the ship you have two panthers on what looks to be a turreted pilot controlled weapon. We will confirm that in just a moment. Uh, as we look towards the rear of the ship, you can see there is a r pretty healthy sized ramp on the back. As far as what will fit in there is a little bit TBD until I actually get this landed and tried. Uh, as far as the way the ship performs, it actually, for a bigger ship, being similar to a Constellation in size, somewhere between that and a Freelancer, it handles very well. Uh, it picks up speed, it's got good acceleration, the top speed ends up being about um, 1285 if I did my math correctly, more likely my flying. Um, the roll rate, the acceleration rate all seem good, so it feels like the maneuvering thrusters are placed well and do a nice job. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean the ship really flies well, it performs well, it seems to be in a pretty good spot. Um, balance wise, I think we'll need to see how it plays against everything else. From the interior of the ship, the cockpit is very open, there is not many struts, you have nice placement of your MFDs, um, you got a nice looking uh, control scheme. Um, you notice there's a lot of physicalized buttons that I think will eventually take that 300 approach where more options are actually selectable buttons instead of kind of these like hovering ones that we're used to. Uh, so yeah. Oh, I guess let me uh, go ahead and try, let me shut off my engines, and then we will try those are auto. Yep, those are turreted. So your, your pilot controlled weapons are turreted. So let's go ahead and get out of the seat where you will see that we have two seats in the cockpit. Um, this ship does have a little bit of a weird bug in Arena Commander, so I'll call that out in just a minute. Um, here are your two seats. Um, on the interior, you'll notice you do have lighting, and on this ship you have the ability to turn lighting on and off as you wish. They're all in these circular buttons. That in a bridge like this is actually probably relatively useful to help make sure you're not seen when you're doing deep space scanning, although that should hopefully be relatively unlikely. Uh, you do have pilot control or pilot accessible um, gun rack in here, which is good in case you have somebody try and board your ship. You'll also notice that there is a new style of um, screen. Sensors on, sensors off. I don't know what this does. It doesn't appear to do anything at this moment. Um, door open, door close is a thing. You also have the option to actually lock so nobody can actually open this door, which is great. Um, that being said, you will notice that when you are on the other side of the door, why you would want to be able to lock your pilots into the cockpit doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But it's a new style. It's something they're working on and coming. 
Um, this is what I was talking about as far as the glitch. Um, you know, why am I looking through the ship? What you actually have here is another airlock. Um, so as you walk through, you'll see that that door actually opens. Um, again, you have an opportunity to turn lights on and off as you please. Um, it's a nice touch and something that is available at various points in the ship. So as you see these types of uh, displays, I'm not going to call them out anymore. Just know that's a light switch. Main concourse of the ship, you have um, you know more weapon storage available to you, which is good to have that available should you ever need it. We'll start off in the rec area where you have a couch, a chessboard, a bar, microwave, coffee center, refrigerator, freezer, whatever you may need. Um, other things that are available in here would be a chessboard, which lo and behold, you've been wanting a way to spend time in quantum travel. Come play chess against your friends because it is functional and you can beat people at chess, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's really about it in here. So what we'll do is come over to the habitation area. Some of these doors open on their own. Some of them require the use of the keypad, so just have that knowledge available to you. In here, there is a lot of crew storage area, so here you can see that you'd be able to put some of your personal belongings. You've got some giant bags that are actually strapped in here. This almost feels like cargo and or smuggling gear, probably. Um, I think when you actually get down to doing the math, there's a couple hundred SCU of smuggling spaces inside of this ship. It's supposed to actually be beneath the floorboards, if I recall correctly, so we'll need to see if there's any interactables for that, but I haven't seen one just yet. Um, you do have the three beds in here, some of which come with things like teddy bears and you know dumbbells, which is great. Um, these are going to be crew cabinets for storing goods. These are bathrooms in here, or at least the world famous toilets. So if you actually come over and use the side buttons, um, you can come in and take a shower, wash your hands, and have a you know a terminal inside to access to be able to open and close. You do have non-functional screens in this area. These should be fantastic for when they are actually functional and you have to get out of bed really quickly to do something. You would have access to do that um, without having to run all the way up to the bridge. So with that, let's go check out the. Um, actually, you know let's look. I haven't seen any interactables on the floor yet. Um, we have confirmed that. Uh, what did I just do? Oh, that's a sit. Yeah, that's not what we're looking for. Oh, okay. Well, I picked up a chess piece. How about that? All right, well, we'll keep looking for floor stuff. Um, but as we come back into the server area, you got to remember that this ship is a combination of data um, data runner. It's also a combination of a cargo ship. It's also kind of a smuggler. Um, there are various things available. And in here, you will see that there are a lot of data cores, which also means that hopefully you have the ability to do some significant um, automation in your ship as far as like AI blades. Uh, I mentioned those actual turret locations on the ship, and you can see the entrance to these is right next to each other. So there's a very intelligent design to how you get into them. So you come to the same center of the ship, and you either go up or down. It also gives you the ability to alternate between the two should you need to if you're operating in kind of an understaffed capacity. Uh, but there's the turret on top of the ship. So we're going to go back down, explore the small remainder of this ship. You can see how it gets out of the seat, which is pretty cool. And let's get back into first person where we will now go check out the cargo area. Outside of the cargo area, there is a small elevator. Don't fall, although there is also stairs, so it's not really, you're pretty safe. Um, once you come in, you can go down. And inside your cargo area is where you will have your um, pretty tall storage area. Uh, my biggest qu curiosity here is whether I could fit a ballista in here if I wanted to. The length looks a little bit questionable, but the height looks like it is probable. Probably the biggest question is going to be this pivot angle right here and whether you can get the missiles in after coming up this ramp. I don't think you're going to be able to. I think we're going to be waiting on the Hercules for that to catch a ride, but we will see. Um, also in this area is going to be your engineering. Um, engineering is where you house most of your components. Most of these are actually in, covered up by working uh, doors that you can expose and see what's in there. You also have your shield generators on the wall. Um, and I still haven't seen access to a hidden compartment yet, so I don't know if that's functional in the game yet. 
So that is your quick and dirty tour of the Star Runner, what it is, what it's used for. So again, kind of exploration, kind of smuggling, kind of cargo, kind of data running. It's just a really well-rounded ship in the verse, and it's something that I think a lot of us have been waiting for because it's got a really cool design and honestly kind of had a cool release to it with the whole way that they had you backing. Um, this is the white one. I do have a skin for the black one, the advocacy one, which will most likely get applied to mine because I do own this ship. I really like this ship, and I'm really excited to have this ship. So with that in mind, that is your tour and first look at the Star Runner. What else is planning to come with this is actually going to be um, a further look of its usefulness in the verse. How well it hauls cargo, how well it flies, if that quantum tank really lives up to the dream. Um, as far as your total cargo, you end up having um, uh, 96 SU. So it's basically right on par with like um, some of the, uh, the County Andromeda, for example. Um, you know, but it's some of the cargo I think is actually going to be available that's really for smuggling. Um, and I don't know what that total is. But again, testing to come. So if you guys have questions on this ship, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you all watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Stay tuned for more and take care.